What's going on guys? My name is Cody. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video and what we're talking about today is we are talking about the gun spread formation out of the Baltimore Ravens offensive playbook. That's right. As finally here, I've been ducking this all year long. I haven't really dove in into the Baltimore book that much. Um, but we're about to do that in this video. And so uh, really, really excited to bring you this. This is going to be a couple of videos where we're going to be breaking down the Baltimore Ravens offensive scheme. Uh, I think this is arguably, um, there's a couple, if you're going to run gun spread, there's really like three to five playbooks that you're going to be using. You're either going to be using Arizona, which is what I use. You're going to use Baltimore, which is what we're going to break down today. You're going to use Tampa Bay, or you're going to use the actual spread playbook. Those are kind of the main um playbooks that you're going to be utilizing and so uh wanted to kind of dive into this i've been getting a lot of uh, questions to do a scheme like this to talk about this formation um the spread by flex from the baltimore book is really really good if they could blend the rate the arizona and the baltimore book together um it would make the spread so so good uh but anyways we're going to dive into this video now if you have not subscribed yet i want to encourage you to do that we upload videos every single day that can help you get better at this game. The other thing I want to talk about really quickly before we dive too far into the video is just that, um, just that if you want to get uh, my uh, my my true fan membership, it is just five bucks. I'm gonna put a link to that in the description. That's where you can get all of the in-depth schemes, uh, all of the offensive defensive updates that I do every single uh, week. So if you want to get that, that is available down in the description for just five bucks. So we have to start with this play circle here um, from the Ravens book. This is the most important play that you can run. And we're going to break this down in a couple of different uh, avenues. I've got Hot Route Master. I don't honestly think you necessarily need it uh, to run this scheme successfully. But we're going to start off with a Mabel concept or Mabel coverage. And this play is insanely effective for a Mabel coverage. So all you're going to do, at least this is what I like to do, um, I just like to put triangle on a hitch. That's pretty much it. And then uh, snap the ball. And what you're going to see is this running back route. When he cuts up field like that, it's an instant snap. Throw the ball out there. Um, and you're going to have a ton of success uh, with that route concept. Okay, So you can easily leverage that. And the reason why is because it's very likely that their user is going to be focused on taking away the left side of the field. And the reason why is because we throw this crossing, this crossing route is really, really good. So they're gonna go over there. If they leave this running back route, you've got about 10 to 15 yards of easy grass that you can work up into with that with that uh, running back. So that's kind of the first read, honestly, on this play. Um, I wanna talk just briefly about this crossing route and I wanna share um, a couple things. It's a multi-window route. It's one of the main reasons I like it. On the first cut, you can throw it right there. You can see you're gonna get this little instant catch animation. Most of the time, this is just my opinion, um, most of the time what you want to learn is like how the defenders will carry this route if they're given the opportunity to. So um, if I'm standing over here with David taking away the running back route, the question that I have is can, um, can that purple zone carry the crosser? So as we look at this, not able to carry it, they all sit on the hitch, and as you can see, we're able to throw the, the crosser on that first initial cut. So what this is going to mean for the defense is they're going to have to choose one of those two routes. They're not going to be able to cover both of them. Um, one of the things that they're going to try to do is they're just going to try to throw a yellow out there to take the running back right away. I want to show that and just kind of show uh, what that looks like. So if they do that, if they put a yellow out there, all you're going to do is just wait for him to cut over the middle. Okay, as you can see right there, that little cut over the middle is you know very simple to wait on, and you're going to have success with that. The other thing I want to talk about um, is, and we'll get, there's a lot of motion in this offense as well, and we'll get to that in just a minute, but I want to talk about this yellow one more time. The cool part about this running back route is it's super, super safe. So I can throw it right there, and I don't have to be afraid that they're going to pick the ball. They're not going to pick the ball. You can throw, as long as he's behind the line of scrimmage, they're not going to ever pick it unless they put their yellows on like, you know, zero, and I don't really feel like people do that. And if they do that, then, you know, we're going to have a lot of other op opportunities. So what you're going to start to force them to do is you're going to start to force them to have this, this yellow zone be over here because they have to defend the running back. They also have to watch out for um, the quick base run from this formation, um, which we can audible right down into the 45 quick base. The, the, the trick with 45 quick base, especially if they're running like 3-3-5 wide, 
is they have to shift their defensive line away. So, like, if you ever see them do this right here, or they're shifting this direction, then you can quick base them pretty much to death. It's really hard to stop the quick base, as you can see. Um, so if you ever see them shift that way, you can just quick base for days. That's one of the things that this formation has. Um, this playbook in general is just better than Arizona for running the ball. There's a lot of better, uh, just a better way to run the ball. So the reason I'm saying that is it's more natural for the defense to put that guy in a yellow than to put this guy in a yellow, okay? So they're going to want to use her in this box. The problem is because the circle play is so good and because this hitch will draw so many defenders, as soon as he cuts to the middle of the field, you can, as soon as he slices through that purple, you can easily throw it really quick. So um, that's a really, really a, a good deal because they're, they're going to have to be conflicted. Um, so anyways... So that's kind of the first component of this play as far as it you know pertains to like the meta defense that you're going to see most in weekend league or whatever. So again, they're going to kind of, you've got to anticipate they're going to sit here and, and more than likely what they're going to do is they're going to run down, kind of show that they're on that, and then they're going to go back over here to, to the square receiver. So you just have to plan on, they're going to, if they don't take away square, we'll throw it all game long. Like, but the next route is this X, uh, or this, um, let me just show you, the crosser when he gets to the sideline. And I, because this crosser is coming from the outside receiver, like the receiver is so, like it's a, it's a really long developing play. Let's say that they, um, let's just say for his sakes that they do that, okay? And I just want to show you the, the rest of the routes in this play. Um, you can also take circle and put him on a curl if you want to. Uh, you don't have to put him on an out route. The out route's not a bad read, especially stock out routes this year. But I just want to show you this crossing route. You see how they move to the inside? Then you can obviously throw on the outside. So that's that's an option that you're able to able to uh, to leverage. Um, I want to talk just briefly about the out route to the left. So the or the out route to the right. So this um, this this route to the Gronkowski. If you motion him to the right, you're going to see that he's going to come in. I find this to be a little bit better placement for him if you're trying to, if you're trying to attack the seams. Um, and the reason why is what you'll see is the cover three. It's basically a cover three bomb. Um, Gronkowski's kind of too slow to do it, but it it automatically will bomb cover three. It's not going to bomb cover three as well with him split because he's outside. So um, if you ran this, if you ran this like with your uh, fade to the short side of the field, that would be one thing. So, like, if I flip this play, um, that, that would be an option. So, let me show you what I'm talking about. So, if I did this, okay, um, and then the defense flipped with me because they would have, you know, the, you'd be coming out in this, right? So, this is more of a better, I just think it's a little bit better of a cover three beater because the, the, the stock deep third is on the other side. So what that's going to create is you should get, and you're, and you're also better placed. Um, but as you can see there, because he's on the numbers, it still is not where we want him to be. That's the one thing about this cover three beater. Um, it's all about the placement. And that's the one bad thing, I think, about having this tight end so far out. So if we motion him to the right, though, you see he's going to come in and he's going to sit on the hash mark. That's exactly where he needs to be for this cover three beater to work. So let me just show you, kind of, and again, Gronkowski, forgive me because Gronkowski is sh slow, but you can get that ball over the top of that, over the top of that coverage. Okay. Um, the, so if you just do this right here, you see it's going to bring both of these guys in. Now the cool part about bringing these guys in is uh, the circle receiver. I would put them on a five yard out route. And the reason why I like a five-yard out route is, number one, for quarters, it's really glitchy. But also, um, if they're playing backed off, like cover three style coverage, you can just throw this out route quick, and they, they can't play cover three. I mean, they literally cannot play cover three. So what you're going to force them to do is you're going to force them to have to do something like this, which I can guarantee you they don't want to do. And even this is not going to work. Um, great because of the placement of the slot corner. Their slot corner should be um, like they would have to come out in with auto flip off, which would cause all kinds of other problems for them. Because when you do this motion right here, you're now mismatched. And so now you can easily just pop this five yard out route over and over. I like to pass lead it up 
and it's even better if they put their curl flats on 10. A lot of people are shifting to that, but but anyways, you, you can complete that out route, okay? Now, you don't want to throw it blind, but you do want to, you know, now if they do something like this, I would not throw it. Um, and that's something that they will do, um, but the problem with that is if they do that, then where you get in a situation is your quick base becomes, again, a lot more or a lot more open if they do that adjustment right there. So that's kind of how you can adjust to the adjustment. But I would, I would recommend motioning them in and putting them on that route. So what you're going to force is you're going to force them to have to play um, just really, I think, just a way they don't want to play. I mean, because they're going to have to respect the quick out. Um, they're going to have to respect the quick throw to the back. And all the while, they're still not able to stop the route that I think is the hardest to stop, which is the, the crossing route. So this combination right here is really, really good spacing-wise. It doesn't look great, but you see when it as it comes through, there's a, there's multiple windows in which you can hit that crosser, which is really, really cool. So, so anyways, that circle um, from, from a spread perspective, this is going to open up this play right here. Uh, Ravens halfback seam. This motion right here, you can do this pretty much sort of for the whole scheme. And the cool part about this one is you've got this double streak on the right, and you could pair that with this out route to the left. So you could do something like this, where you're really attacking the the, the seams. Uh, but this is really good for his own coverage, and we'll get to more of an in-depth breakdown on that in the, in the future. But that's just a little tease about what's to come. So Ravens spread. Um, is on the way. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn my full spread offense, I'd encourage you to join the True Fan membership. It's just five bucks a month, and it gives you the most up to date stuff that I'm running right now on offense, on defense, as well as it gives you pro player breakdowns every single week. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and be sure to join the True Fan membership on the Patreon down in the description.